Local artists are gracing the walls of businesses all around the Twin Tiers. This week on Twin Tiers Sunday, we asked organization Arte what inspired them to share their passion. Tune in. You're watching Twin Tier Sunday with Jennifer Chia. Welcome to Twin Tier Sunday. This week we're talking about Arte, a local organization that takes local artists and infuses them into the community. Now this is Allison. She's the organizer of this whole entire um, wonderful thing that's going on right now. Tell me a little bit about Arte and what it's about. Um, Arte is an organization that supports, lo supports local art and our mi my mission is to uh, promote art in non-traditional spaces or public spaces like cafes, wineries, restaurants around the Finger Lakes to bring that local art to the masses, to every type of demographic out there. Wonderful. How many artists are you working with currently? Oh boy. Um, well, I do, at a time I am running like 10 exhibits at once. So that's 10 artists at once, but in a whole, um, in a year, probably like 100, but that doesn't count for some of the events that I do outside of the exhibiting. So. Wonderful. Now, where are some of the places people can find your artwork then, or your um, local artist artwork? Damiani Wine Cellars, Stella Cafe in College Town in Ithaca, Red Tail Ridge, Ridge Winery in Penn Yan, Bella Capelli Spa in Corning. Wonderful. How did you get involved in all of this? Because I know that you have a big art background, so tell me a little bit about your background in art and then how it kind of sprung you into this career that you've started. Sure. Well, I started out as a studio artist and then I got really interested in art history and exhibiting and I started managing my friend's art exhibits in college and I got really interested in it and took some courses in it. Um, and then, you know, after I got my master's degree, I found, I found this hole in the Finger Lakes of between the venue and the artist, um, just like the musicians have a booking agent with a venue, I'm kind of like that, but for artists. Wonderful. How are, what's the, what is the artist feedback in all of this? Because I know oftentimes it's hard when you live in the smaller communities around the Finger Lakes to find a place to showcase what you love to do, what your passion is. So what has been their feedback towards you and the opportunity that now you've given them? Mm -hmm. um, they are really always really thankful that they get the opportunity to exhibit in new places. Um, I'm really flexible and I listen to them. Um, in, in their requests about you know where they want to exhibit, we talk about you know the people that might they might want to show to, um, and how to like best promote themselves um, during their exhibit and their opening. Um, yeah, so they're really happy they have this opportunity, you know, because I'm not only booking an exhibit for them, I work with them to help them, um, you know, better their success of selling their artwork and. Definitely. Now, you yourself, too, are an artist, is to my understanding. So, growing up, well, you played a few instruments, and then you went away to college as well, to Italy. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, yeah, I always had a really strong, like, musical theater, dance, musical, you know, played, played music and art background. My grandma was an antique dealer, so I was always exposed to that. And then my mom made me take all these instruments and stuff. And then I kind of found art on my own. Um, I did a mural in eighth grade and realized that I kind of was good at it and I really enjoyed it. And, um, you know, like I said, I started out with studio art, but then got into the art history and exhibiting. And a big part of where I did that was in Florence, Italy. I lived there for a year, finished my bachelor's there. And there I actually managed... Um, uh, an art exhibit of international student work in public spaces. So that's that was my first uh, non-traditional art exhibit, I guess, outside of the traditional white-walled gallery. Cool. So what's next for you now in the Arte? Um, well, I'm expanding. You know, meeting new artists every day. I'm always, you know, working with new venues. I'm um, working with, you know, new artists one-on-one. -on -one. I'm working with a gentleman right now. Where trying to get exhibits in Berlin and, and in Italy so I don't just work in the Finger Lakes you know whatever the artist goals are I try to accommodate that so 
really great. Now, tell me a little bit about where can people go to visit you or see the work that all the artists that you are involved with, where can they go and kind of be in contact with not only you if they're an artist and they want to show their work, but if they want to buy some work as well. Mm -hmm. So you would visit my website. It's www.arteflx.com. So Arte Finger Lakes. And, you know, you can click on the links and there's Happenings, which set, has the schedule of artists and their openings and where the venues are located. Um, and then if you go to the artist link, you can scroll down to some of the artists that I work very closely with. And then you can get to their websites and you can purchase their work through their websites. Um, and then of course, contact, the contact section is my email and that's the best way to email me or contact me. Thank you so much, Allison. Guys, stay tuned because right after the break, you're gonna meet some of those amazing artists that you can see right here in your hometown. Twin Tier Sunday will return in a moment. All right, welcome back. We're here at Lot 10 with Samuel. He's an artist that works with the organization RE. Sam, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm pretty good. Tell me a little bit about how you got involved with this organization. So I got involved with RE um, through uh, me and Allison's mutual uh, Alfred University connections. So I was um, going to school at Alfred University and she was invited to come do a portfolio review through that uh, review, we became connected, and that sort of led to us um, working, working together with shows and me starting to show in Ithaca, so. That's pretty yeah. cool. Tell me a little bit about what kind of art you do and what you're showing right now. So what I'm showing right now at Lot 10 is a body of work that is um, mixed media. It's uh, drawing on sort of found objects, collaging, um, it's dealing with sort of uh, what I call 30 rack culture. It's dealing with young people, uh, a lot of inspiration from uh, writers like Jack Kerouac and uh, Ernest Hemingway, um, dealing with that sort of uh, coming of age narrative uh, and what that means sort of uh, for the millennial generation. That's really cool. Now tell me a little bit about your artwork in general. I know that I was reading online, you said sometimes you kind of go out at night and the next morning you come up with an idea. Yeah. How do you then take that idea and make it come to fruition? Um, so a lot of my work does start the night before um, because I'm dealing with a sort of uh, party motif. I'm dealing with images that uh, our bar scenes, our house party scenes. Um, it starts with uh, a documentary style photography. So um, I'm always sort of have my camera with me, uh, always sort of looking for that um, sort of essential scene. You know, there's always something that sort of happens and it clicks. Um, but then it's about going into the studio, it's about sifting through all those photographs, it's about uh, thinking how I can tweak them. Sometimes they're posed, uh, sometimes I'll bring people in to sort of recreate something I've seen or something that I'm thinking about um, to sort of get my message across. And then it begins with a drawing, um, and then, well, with these work, it begins with a drawing, and then it. Uh, is uh, collaged into, okay. cut up, and manipulated. What kind of objects then, or like, I guess, the material do you use to make your collages? So the collage is, the drawing is done on um, really cheap paper, sort of uh, referencing the paper bag, um, the sort of uh, liquor store bag, if you will. Um, and then it's collaged right onto the objects uh, of beer boxes, right onto um, the artifact of the party itself. Um, I'm really interested in logo and pattern. Uh, so those are things that I've constantly been working with in my paintings. So to bring them into these sort of collage based works just uh, seemed like the logical step, I guess. That's really cool. So it makes sense because it's, I mean, your artwork maybe doesn't appeal to like the older generation, the older crowd, but you're yeah. definitely taking a step um, towards, you know, the college kids, younger generation kids, and I think the spot that Allison chose for this, we're at Lot 10 right now, is definitely fitting for that. Have you got, what kind of feedback have you been getting from people that see it work? Uh, I've been getting really good feedback, and uh, we, I did have um, a really great review in the Ithaca Times, and, and that was really exciting for me. It was my first press, so um, really exciting. 
and I think that in a way uh, we're in love as a as a painter. You know, I'm a, a painter uh, sort of first. You know, as a yeah. self-identifying feature, but um, somehow these pieces really work better in a non-traditional space and and they are being accessible to people who are interested in things like street art which these are yeah. definitely referencing and um, yeah older generations they may be <laughs> um, they're a little uh, hesitant or uh, a little skeptical of it maybe um, but I think that there are also a lot of people who sort of you know, they can separate themselves from who they are now and sort of say, oh yeah, I was that kid once, that's right, you know, Jack Kerouac wrote in the 60s when I was being this person, and um, yeah. so yeah, it's a mixed, uh, mixed combination. No, that's really cool, definitely, like you said, it almost takes the older generation to kind of step back and say, you know what, I remember those old times. Yeah, exactly, and, and it's not um, all sort of happy-go-lucky, you know, blissful yeah. um, resignation of the real world uh, it is you know with that bright white crayon uh, and that stark drawing it is sort of asking it to be in between these uh, maybe religious icons um, with the halos and, and some of the other religious uh, iconography that's going on um, but it's also putting a sort of scarce or skeletal feature to these characters and maybe uh, dealing with those tensions of yes, this is uh, a time to be sort of blissfully youthful and and um, a little self-indulgent, but it's also uh, I want the reader also step away and say, okay, but this is also a, a little problematic. You know, there's another there's a silver line, or not a silver line, but there's another line. Aside to, this. to everything. Yeah. So, what is your favorite piece that you've done so far? Then, um, or at least in this collection. Yeah, in this collection. I think, and I don't know if they can uh, see it. This I'll is, pull it up later. For yeah, you guys can, can uh, check it out later. But um, this is one uh, of my friend Jeff, and it's one of the later works. And it was, I think I'm just more excited about it because I got more creative with how he's using collage. It wasn't so systematic. You get involved into a series, and eventually you feel like you're just producing the same thing over again. Um, then to, then to step back and to break that pattern, um, it really gives you energy and really uh, gets you going again, gets you kicking. And that was what that piece was. Uh, there's another piece um, titled Felix, which is sort of the same uh, same thing. It, they happen, I think both of those were done uh, like a day apart, you know, wow. really, really quick <laughs> succession. Some of the best things always kind of just pop. Yeah, exactly. Right? Right? Those, <laughs> come out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, people always say that art is it's feast or famine, and it's feast or famine in terms of you know, in terms of everything, in terms of emotions, in terms of producing. You know, uh, there are some moments when you know you can't produce and you're not making anything that's good, and then there are those brilliant moments where you're sort of jumping around the studio, go, like with can't that get it out fast enough. going on, and you're like, yes, I've done it. And, Oh, that's but, great. Yeah. How did you get? How did you get involved with all of this? Were you like a young kid with like a paintbrush in your, you know, in your hands, or like eating the paintbrush? I mean, yeah, I mean, like... yeah coming up with. <laughs> I actually, yeah, I, when I for a long time I had my studio in my parents' basement, and I would come up and they'd be like, you know, your teeth are blue. <laughs> that paint is made of cobalt. Like you should probably not suck on that paintbrush so much. Um, but yeah, I guess I will. You'll have to interview my mother for that. that <laughs> but I think it's always sort of been. I, uh, I've always been drawing, I've always loved drawing, it's always been, uh, it's always been a sort of relaxing exercise for me, and, uh, I think that in maybe like ninth or 10th grade, I was sort of toying with ideas of doing other things, but I just couldn't really see myself doing yeah. anything else, so. So then where can people get a hold of you? Where else can people see you other than Lot 10? Or, you know, come on down to Lot 10. It's, yeah, an awesome, it's an awesome shindig. So come down here, definitely. But where else can people kind of get in contact with you if they want to buy your work? Where can they go? Oh, the work um, is available uh, at my website, which is samuelcguy.com. Uh, S-A-M-U-E-L-C-G-U-Y.com. I also have a blog, um, and that is samuelcguy.blogspot.com. Um, and people can check out the work there. Uh, in addition to my uh, mixed media works, it also has 
Uh, my most recent body of paintings up there, which sort of deal with the same issues uh, just through paintings. So, uh, That's yeah. really cool. Wonderful. It's been nice meeting you. Yeah, thank and you. And good luck to you. you got a thank big you. future ahead of you. I'm uh, Come down and look at his work because it's awesome. It's a cool vibe. Enjoy. All right, we'll see you right after the break with a little more art. Twin Tier Sunday will return in a moment. Welcome back. Ken joins us now. He is one of the artists that participates in the Art E organization. He's going to tell a little bit, a little bit about his work and what he does. Ken, how did you get to Newfield? Because I know you originally lived out in Hawaii and have traveled across the world, and now you're back here. Well, yeah, I came out basically to be around my grandkids and uh, my daughter and her husband. But you know, I wanted an opportunity to participate in my grandkids' lives. That's wonderful. Now, what kind of art do you do and how did you get involved with Art E? Well, the kind of art I do, and I've been doing this for about 40 years, is pointillistic paintings. And I started out in watercolors and acrylics, just creating paintings with nothing but dots, um, like Seurat or Pissarro or some of those other uh, impressionists. And then uh, I switched to oils in the early right after the millennium I guess and uh, so since that time I've been doing uh, pointillistic oil paintings wood carvings and pointillistically painted wood carvings. Now pointillism is, is very difficult from what I saw um, actually Ken's paintings up at Damiani that's how kind of got me interested in this whole episode in general and they were absolutely stunning and I was just looking at the detail it must take so long to create one piece of artwork. Well that's probably why I'm one of the few uh, dedicated pointillists on the planet. There's very few painters out there who uh, are dedicated pointillists like some of those famous impressionists were. And you know the reason I, I stay with it is because it's it's not exhausted its potential yet. In fact I'm just scratching the surface. And so I'm totally in love with it and it chose me. I never chose it. That's wonderful. So I guess what made you stick with it, though, instead of turning to something like, a, I don't know, watercolor or something, like sculpting or any of those things? What made you say, you know what, I'm going to stick with this. This is what I'm good at. Well, because I've always loved the shimmer and the effect that pointillism creates. You know, it changes with your angle of regard. Um, you know, it breaks up when you get close. It, when it, you step away, it, it tightens up and comes into focus. Um, I think it's constantly changing. You see different things. You can craft color relationships that you can't with any other uh, medium. You know, you can build colors that look gray from a distance, and you get up close, and you find out there's greens, purples, oranges, and everything else in there. Incredible. What is one of your favorite art pieces that you've created? You know, after years and years of doing this, looking back, I guess one piece that you have in mind that always kind of stands out to you. Oh boy, there's a couple of them. It's very hard to actually uh, pick one, but probably one of them, the, the top one, is a, a painting that was a three-dimensional painting created from eight cubes, and it was interactive. And so as you would look at one face of this eight cubes that made one master cube, you would see a portrait. And then you manipulate the cubes, and other portraits would emerge. And then you would manipulate them, turn them inside out, and all of a sudden there, there is six generations, 52 portraits of, of six generations of family in this piece. Oh my gosh, that sounds absolutely incredible. Maybe I can get a picture of that later and make sure you guys see that too, because it sounds amazing. Now, your artwork has also gotten the attention of people from all around the world. Tell me some of the people, I guess, that have bought your art and kind of some of the contacts, I guess, that you have made traveling all over the world. Well, m my best venue by far was working at the Four Seasons in Maui and at the Grand Wailea in Maui. And especially early on in the early 2000s because people, it was a crossroads for people from all over the world. And people who came and stayed there were all qualified buyers because my work is not inexpensive because of the time that goes into it and and I became 
I caught the eye of, of many of these people and their CEOs, uh, Fred Turner, the late Fred Turner, who a good friend of mine. I have uh, movie stars, uh, Vanessa Williams, for example, who's bought pieces, uh, heads of state, uh, they're in corporate collections, um, private collections all over the world. Wonderful. Now, heading back to here in your home, it takes a while to get to their home that they're building right now. Um, but before you started this project here for your daughter, I was reading online that you would travel a lot with your wife. What are some of the journeys that you guys took together, whether it have to be with your daughter or not? Well, okay. What we try and do in the winter is get out of the cold winters. I lived 22 years in Alaska before Hawaii, so I've uh, kind of paid my dues, I suppose, with the cold weather. <laughs> and so um, what we do is, is we look out there and try and harvest caretaking opportunities. Two years ago, we went to uh, the Canary Islands and Care took a sailboat for two months and then Care took a farm on, the, on uh, the island of La Gomera for a couple months. Last year, we were in Brazil for six months. This year, we're actually going back to the Canary Islands. And uh, in those places, uh, I try and spend my time trying to capture the inspiration that's around there, you know, because, you know, every place has its own culture. And, and ex get, getting exposed to it, you know, you can't help but, you know, try and want to express that if you're an artist. That's wonderful. How do you then take those different cultures and infuse them into your work? Well... You know, there's good and bad about everywhere you go, and I try and, you know, do that in a way that's, you know, I'm still kind of an artist that I don't like to shock people too much, you know. Um, I like to create something that's pleasant to look at and also something that is worth looking at for a long period of time and uh, that you won't get tired of, that has depth of, of interpretation in it. And so, um, in Brazil, for example, we stayed in the Ana's hometown of Bajé, uh, and it was an old town, gaucho culture, and it was kind of dirty, run down, not taken care of town, you know, and I was, I expressed that, but I still wanted to give a, a, a sort of a, a pleasant um, interpretation of that because there's many good things about that place as well and so I, I the biggest painting that is at the show of Damiani is Bajé yeah, and I believe I saw it as well yeah and uh, it's kind of abstract and cubistic in a way and and uh, you know I, I feel like I captured my impression of that Wonderful. Yeah, I often find the same kind of feeling when you're doing your work, even you know, for Twin Tears Under or anything like that. Is oftentimes people don't realize the beauty in front of them, even when they're in kind of a, a bad situation. So that's nice that you have that vision going and traveling all over and bringing that back here and giving the opportunity to people here locally to see that and to acknowledge that as a beautiful thing. Now, where are you um, also showcasing right now other than Damiani? That's it right now. I've had very little time in lately because of building my house. It's the, my third summer building it. And so my time in the local area has been basically focused on that. And so, you know, fortunately I met Allison and, she, and she's connected me with some other venues. We've done, I've done some other shows with her and, and uh, um, that's how this Damiani opportunity came to pass. And uh, I do their plain air event as well out there. They have their annual plain air festival, which is a really a nice event. And um, so I'm just beginning. My, it's my intention to open my own studio gallery. Um, it's uh, right now the concept is to call it One Piece, uh, where I will hand select several artists that will just have one piece in there. But it will be spelled One Piece, P-E-A-C-E. -E. <laughs> and uh, we'll have a portion of the uh, proceeds from that go to being part of the solution, you know, for world peace. And it's also going to be a very artist-friendly venue where I will charge a much more artist-friendly commission rate as well because it will be my studio and my uh, presentation venue as well and so that's wonderful now where can people reach you or go see your work if they just want to see it online well there's a couple ways that a good way to do it is kenkennel.com or I also have a Facebook page that's Ken Kennel Fine Art and that kind of keeps you up with what I'm, what I'm doing at the moment you know and, and you can see progress photos of pieces as they emerge from a blank canvas to a sketch to 
now a painting that's just starting on through the whole process. That's wonderful. Ken, thank you so much for having me out to your house today. It's been a cool experience kind of even getting up there. And thank you for inspiring me to even kind of take up this episode in general. You guys, I hope you enjoyed, you know, seeing the different art, learning what you can go out and explore in your own community. And make sure you tune in next week to Twin Tier Sunday as we explore the deep roots of the Elmira history.